So I'm Adrian Pickering and I'm the Regional General Manager for Red Hat um, and myself and my team work across Middle East and, and North Africa so all the way from Pakistan and the East going all the way to the west coast of Africa, Morocco, Senegal and all of the countries in between. So fairly big, big region, very diverse. Very big and diverse region, Adrian. Yeah. I have a couple of questions on cloud. Uh, to start with, I would like you to answer before that on Jitex. Yeah. How was your experience being at Jitex? What's going on at Jitex this year? So it's our seventh year here at Jitex, only for Red Hat. Um, I would honestly have to say that this year has probably been the busiest ever. Um, it's been a fantastic week, an exhausting week for me because we've had a record number of customers and partners coming to our booth and um, you know asking about uh, Red Hat, what we're doing globally, what we're doing in the region and then going into more detail about how we can support them in terms of their transformation whether it's a public sector company we've had we've got many um, uh, ministries for example government departments are utilizing our technology or commercial organizations banks oil and gas manufacturing the whole range so as I say it, it has been a fantastic week it, it's been extremely busy probably more so than I can recall over the last couple of years obviously post COVID so I think the investment that we make in actually being here and having the booth and bringing our staff all together, we've had a number of global executives fly in as well. Been a fantastic week. Adrian, I must say I love your double-decker stand here. <laughs> so, so let me ask you something on digital transformation. Yeah. So, Adrian, what do organizations and the stakeholders need to know about cloud transformation, using of cloud services? So, You've hit a very interesting point. You, you're starting to see the industry buzzwords moving from you know, digital transformation. Now we're talking about cloud adoption, cloud transformation and so on. So it's kind of the, the, the marketing buzzword du jour, but it, it, is a, it is a complex arena. And I think it's starting to accelerate as a topic because we've now seen the global players starting to set up their shop, put their, uh, their, their, their actual premises on the ground and starting to offer their services in the countries around the Gulf Middle East region in particular. Um, there are still some countries where the regulatory picture is still under development. So in some countries, organizations are holding back in terms of embracing the cloud. But in other countries like the UAE, where that regulatory picture is much more clear, the majority of customers that we're working with have some form of cloud strategy. Quite often I hear this term, you know, cloud first. But there is a big if in, in all of this. So yes, for sure, organizations can migrate their workloads, their applications, from their on-premise environments, their own data centers. Yes, they can put them onto various cloud platforms that are offered in the region, but it has to be um, a technical and an economic decision. First of all, can your applications run effectively in that cloud environment? And that for many organizations is a very big challenge because in certain instances, applications have been developed to run on mainframes, uh, on mini systems, they're still there. And those require considerable modification in order to be capable of running in, in the cloud environment. That's point number one. The second one is the economic question. Is it cost effective to move from your on-prem establishment into the cloud environment? And Case in point, I was at a banking event probably a month ago here in Dubai and around the table we had about 20 banking folks mixed, you know, some from within the business, some, you know, folks who are doing payment systems, some's running mortgage business, some technology folks. 
but about 70% of the people in attendance on that event said that economically, commercially, they were still to be convinced that it was the right move to make for their organizations. So that's a very interesting dynamic. Um, and I guess that's a challenge for the cloud providers because the cloud providers all want to get more customers onto their platform, but they've got to have a very compelling economic argument to do so. And plus they've got to overcome the technology challenges of getting those applications onto that platform. Adrian, you are compelling me to ask the next question. I can't resist. So the next question is on the cloud strategy. Yeah. How essential is having a good cloud strategy for business organizations? And see yeah. many organizations today are having cloud first strategy. Yeah. What's your take on that? So, uh, I mean, look, every organization, whether you're a public sector or private sector, you want to serve your customers effectively. So they could be citizens of a state, you know, uh, who are wanting to interact with the government for driving licenses or passports or water bills, whatever it may be, utility bills. Or you may be a bank, for example, who wants to offer new products to the customers, um, become more cost effective in a, in a rapidly consolidating environment. So um, efficiency is extremely important. The speed of innovation is, is very, very important. And again, having that commercial flexibility, the commercial benefit from making these uh, from making these transitions. So, as I said, most of the organisations we're speaking to have have this cloud strategy in mind. What we in Red Hat say to them is, we will help you with that decision process. We have um, solutions in our portfolio that can help help you with your technology migration. Um, we have tools in our portfolio that help you manage your workloads in a multi-cloud environment. But very importantly, dear customer, please make sure that you don't get locked in to a certain cloud provider and then have difficulty moving your workloads off that cloud to another cloud or back onto prem. And that can happen, right? That, that there is absolutely something that can happen and customer funds are locked into a two or three year commercial arrangement, all of a sudden the, the price of you know, cloud compute comes down by 50%, they could get a much better commercial rent with another cloud provider, but they locked in and they can't move their, their applications across. So these are some of the discussions that we're, that we're having. And you know, to the point of what Red Hat is doing, not only in the region, but on a global basis, our stated mission, or as our CEO, Matt Hicks, calls it, our North Star, our guiding star, is to enable the customer to get the best of the open hybrid cloud. That means giving the customer the flexibility to run, it could be today on AWS, it could be tomorrow running on Microsoft Azure, it could be the day after running on the G42 platform, a sovereign cloud provider um, here in the UAE or a combination of all of them. That's our principle, allowing the customer to have that ability to flex and move between cloud platforms. And fortunately, that's resonating extremely well. You know, most of the smart um, business leaders and CIOs, CTOs, you know, are beginning to understand that that flexibility is very important. I also have to say there are some customers who absolutely want to remain on-prem, to use the industry uh, jargon. They want to remain in their own, on their own technology platforms and run their own private cloud. So kind of build their own mini cloud environment with all the same benefits, you know, ability to run containers, ability to switch workloads between data centers effectively. Some customers are still going you know, in that direction and are monitoring what's ha happening in the public cloud environment so that again, if it becomes attractive, if it becomes economically viable, then they can start to exploit that by seamlessly moving workloads onto that public environment. I know it's organizational culture. That's, that's what the CEOs or the stakeholders has to understand before div uh, 
deciding on which cloud to go for. Yeah. But I have a question to ask on that. So, how can organizations decide on which cloud to go for? Private, public, hybrid? What's the basic criteria to understand this? So, I think, um, you know, some of it depends on the legacy of, of where that customer actually is. So, for example, uh, you may have a particular customer who over years have you know, worked with Microsoft Windows and they've got Windows applications throughout their business and they may have a, therefore a, a, a very strong relationship with, for example, with a Microsoft, okay? Um, and so Microsoft can put into place special commercial agreements that allow them to consume either on the Azure cloud or the Microsoft cloud or consume on their, their premises. So some of it is, you know, historic relationships, uh, uh, enterprise level agreements and things of that nature. Um, but then in other cases, again, going back to my, the example I gave in the banking round table that I was at, um, you know, one organization was a, a completely new brand, you know, a community bank that has been developed and it made absolute sense for them to go out to the marketplace to the various cloud providers <coughs> and get the best commercial deal for what they required. And, and so they did that. And again, they've come with one of the, 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 the global uh, folks um, and have got everything running in that cloud environment. So there's a multiplicity of factors. It's, it's where, where the customer is from right now. Do they have relationships with any of the providers? Is there sensitivity of the data? Can the data reside in outside a country or does it need to reside in country? in which case you probably need a sovereign cloud provider or at least one of the, the global folks who built the platform here in the UAE or in, in Qatar or wherever it may be. Um, but these are all, you know, it's, it's a fairly complex list that, um, that an organization has to go through to make that decision. Lot of factors there. Yeah. Each factor is a question for to ask you. But let me go to the next question. Yeah, sure. And the final one is, see high turnout for JITEX this time. Yeah. Why do you think people are so, what do you think people are so curious for? And why are they attending uh, in so large numbers? I mean, you just have to walk around this huge exhibition and see the diversity of technology that's, that's here. I mean, you've got everything from print cartridges to, you know, mainframe computer suppliers and everything in between. Um, it's, it, it's such a very diverse industry. Um, I think that attracts a very wide range of, of folks from, you know, whether they are developers, whether they are systems administrators, whether they are CIOs, COOs, CEOs. I mean, we've had, or, or indeed, you know, government personnel, you know, senior government personnel. They're coming here to, to see what's happening in the industry. And, um, you know, some of the, the innovation around you know, things like AI, which is coming along you know, at the same time as this, the, the, the cloud and the open hybrid cloud, you know, there's so much rapid development around AI as, and as an example. I mean, you know, we're embracing AI to, um, you know, to further enhance our automation tools, okay? Um, so it's a great opportunity for um, customers from around this entire region to come and you know, meet and listen to the industry experts and to maybe, you know, get some new ideas about what's happening in the marketplace that they can then take back to their business so that they can maintain, you know, their pace of innovation or the competitive edge or to serve their citizens better. So, um, great opportunity for people to be here.